first off, Happy New Year's everyone. Hope you enjoyed the holidays and had an amazing time. Uh, just two quick things before we get started. Now I just want to apologize for taking so long uh, releasing this guide. Basically, I was told that they were going to do a huge beta update for you know Season 2 in Vermintide. And basically my flight was the day before. So uh, I thought it would kind of suck to put the amount of hours I put into these guides and then just come back and be like, Oh shit, half the stuff I said is now irrelevant. Cool. <laughs> So basically, aside from New Year's Eve, I've pretty much been editing, sleeping, sleeping, editing, including on the 30th of December, where I hit level uh, 26 in real life. Woo! Only four more years for my career ability talent! Also, uh, a big announcement, or, well, I, I don't know if it's big, it's just an announcement, I guess. <laughs> I'm changing the channel name to The Party Knife uh, in the coming week. I just thought I'd let you guys know so you're not like, who the fuck's this part knife guy? I didn't subscribe to his shit. But I'll leave the Vermintide Amplify banner. But basically, I'm just trying to think long term. At some point, I would love to make other stuff as well, which is kind of hard when the channel name is so specific to a singular thing. But don't worry for now, I am only focusing on Vermintide. So I'm still going to be uploading the, the exact same content that you guys are used to. Anyways, point being, it wasn't supposed to be this long for the guy to come out. So I'm going to see if I can... Uh, if I can get the next one up and running in uh, a short amount of time without reducing quality content, of course. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, I just wanted to apologize for not uploading in almost two weeks. And with that out of the way, here's a quick description of all the things we're going to go through uh, in today's solid guide. So uh, prepare your submarine because we're, uh, we're diving deep. So let's move on into the seven super salty secrets. First one, not that much of a secret, uh, he has 150 base HP before adding any modifiers, which is going to be 180 once you uh, apply 20% health. His career ability has a cooldown of uh, 60 seconds, half of which you can actually remove uh, instantaneously with uh, one of his talents. On top of that, you replenish half a second per enemy minion that you cleave through, so if you hit uh, four minions with one attack, that's two seconds. As well as a uh, a fifth of a second per damage taken. So uh, let's say you were to take 50 damage, you just divide that by 5 and you would uh, get a total of 10 seconds off your ulti. But come on, the thing that really makes Zelda amazing is the fact that with great power comes great passives. Or maybe the other way around, who knows. Um, basically per 25 HP missing, starting at 150. So even with if you have 20% health as a necklace, it's still calculating as if you had uh, 150 health. Uh, and for each 25 health you're missing, starting at 150, you gain 1 out of 6 stacks, each of which grant plus 5% power, which stacks additively with, uh, with your current hero power, as well as uh, your power versus traits. Right, so just to give an example, um, that would be, uh, let's say you have 20% versus Skaven, and you have all 6 stacks. Uh, that would be 20% from the uh, item modifiers, 30% from your passive, and you would deal a total of 150% power slash damage um, to a Skaven minion. Now the great thing is that it doesn't actually calculate temporary HP. Um, like I It does sorry, t uh, calculate temporary HP as missing health which basically means that you can run around permanently with 30% extra power. It also works when your team is holding Grimoires and you're cursed. Um, on top of that, it synergizes amazingly with his next um, passive, which is basically a get out of jail free card every two minutes. Uh, upon taking le lethal damage, you're just gonna get a, an uh, invulnerable buff for five seconds, and after that, those five seconds, uh, a two minute cooldown will start for the reset and basically regardless of the amount of damage you take it's just gonna set your HP to 1 and then you have the 5 seconds of invulnerability that you really want to make use of because that's when you're gonna need to create some temporary HP <laughs> also for God's sake remember that this passive starts on cooldown <laughs> meaning it's gonna be 2 minutes before you can proc your first invulnerability because I'm hopelessly incapable of remembering that myself after one a minute and a half uh, <laughs> at the very least, it's uh, it's worth keeping in mind. <laughs> and uh, just as a quick courtesy, uh, for those of you who might just be looking for a, a quick build or two, uh, don't want to watch a super long 50 minute video, I'll just share with you without explanation, for now, the two builds that I use the most. They're basically identical in terms of talents, because this is, just, in my opinion, the, the best way to play him at the moment. Not the only way to play him, but my prefer, uh, preferred way. 
the only thing I really vary in this is gonna be Axe and Falcon and uh, the one shot crossbow or brace of pistols and uh, the flail. Not necessarily in that order, in, in, in that context, like the four weapons have enough variety each on their own that you can combine them uh, in any way you see fit. Uh, standard necklace, again Boon of Shala is super important because it stacks with uh, your Holy Favor, Castle Tax be here, and uh, Crit Chain Stamina Recovery, which I would of course swap with the uh, Crit Chains and Curse Assistance if you're uh, if you're playing on lower difficulties in your farming books. It's not necessary though cause with Zealot because you're, uh, you're just gonna proc your uh, your buff easier, but it's gonna still give you a, a lower uh, temporary HP cap. So uh, I do suggest running Curse Resistance if you're uh, doing double grim still. But guys, I think it, it's, it's time. Brace yourselves. We're going deep now. I, I almost made part 4 and 5 of this guide into a video in of its own. If you realize after part 4 and 5 of this guide that you completely misunderstood some of these concepts, don't worry about it. Like, based on the research I've done, Reddit post, Discord uh, servers, Steam guides and Fat Shark forum posts, I came to the conclusion that, that no one does. Okay, that I, I'd be willing to bet a hundred bucks that if you were to take nine random uh, quick play players from Cataclysm, at least like, at, at best one of them would be able to accurately explain both stagger and cleave mechanics. Um, like if you have a thousand plus hours played in this game, you very likely intuitively have a pretty good concept about how the two mechanics play together, but almost un unless you researched, like unless you you really tested every single one of those preconceptions yourself, I'm almost certain you misunderstood at least one, like one talent, one way of calculating whatever it might be. But I feel fairly confident that uh, that I got it right. Of course, I'm I'm, I'm human. If uh, if there's something uh, I fuck up or uh, for whatever reason miscalculated or uh, expressed the wrong way, feel free to correct me in uh, in the comments and uh, I'll address it the best I can. But uh, anyways, here goes. For the sake of simplicity, let's uh, pretend we're playing a sixth hero called Bob, and uh, Bob's only talent is that he has no talent. And because he had no talent, he couldn't get any loot, which means he only had one weapon. And that weapon only has one attack, and that attack deals a thousand damage. Now, a wild horde appears, and Bob starts swinging, so uh, this is what it would look like. Basically, whenever you hit a minion uh, within a certain timer, you give it plus one on in its uh, stacker count. Like you don't get the buff from the stacker count you apply, meaning you encounter a minion, it has zero stacker, you hit it, now it has one stacker but you don't get any buff. Work. Now your second attack, if it's quick enough, um, is going to add, uh, set the stacker count from 1 to 2 and get the buff from 1. Now the buff from 1 is a 20% damage modifier, which basically means you're going to deal 20% extra damage, you go from a, a hypothetical 1000 to a hypothetical 1200. The third attack, now it has a stacker count of 2. It's just going to reset the stacker count of 2, reset the cooldown for that stacker count, as well as get the 40% the damage buff. That applies to every minion you cleave through, which means uh, if you were able to cleave through 6 minions, then all those 6 minions will get a 40% damage bonus to whatever DPS you were going to apply to them in the first place. Now if a uh, Bob were to grab a bow and start shooting minions instead, uh, stagger works a little bit different. Um, the first attack gets zero, so it, it gets the buff, but it actually applies a stagger count of two, meaning the first attack it doesn't get anything, the second attack goes jumps straight to 40, um, as well as the third attack. Uh, and that's true for all the talents. Uh, the only exception is um, uh, the enhanced power, which is applied before these stagger buffs, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. But that's basically how, how it works without a stagger talent, right? Now, let's uh, start by, uh, start up by uh, talking about mainstay, the one at the bottom, just because it, it's the simplest one. It functions exactly the same way as not having a talent, but with superior modifiers. Instead of zero, uh, instead of multiplying by uh, one, 
then 1.2 and then 1.4 you multiply by 1 then 1.4 and then 1.6 um, which makes sense Smiter however now let's read carefully the first enemy hit always counts as staggered so far so good deal 20% more damage to staggered enemies each hit against a staggered enemy adds another count of stagger bonus damage to increase to 40% against enemies afflicted by more than one stagger effect. Now let's examine what actually happens. So the first enemy counts as staggered. Makes sense. The first attack you do, you get the 20% modifier. The, when you then attack that same minion again, it didn't actually get a stagger from the first. Uh, the sack was still set from 0 to 1, but it just counted as staggered, so it's still a 1.2. And your third attack. 1.4 because it has a stagger count of 2 then exactly all of these things are mentioned in the in the talent description what is not mentioned however is the fact that any other minion you cleave through is completely deprived of any of the the base stagger buffs which means you're basically trading single target damage 100% for cleave so you're, you're removing so even if you were hit through 7 minions only one of them, the first one you encounter, would actually obtain any of the stagger buffs whatsoever, which is not mentioned in the talent at all. Like it literally refers to enemies in, in plural. I mean, at the very least, it is poorly worded and fairly misleading. But that leaves us in a scenario where mainstay is going to be better in most cases. Any scenario where you don't one hit a minion on the first attack with Smiter you're going to be outcompeted in value already on the second attack mainstay is equal in dps on the first minion you hit and already there it has 40% extra damage to every minion it cleaves through and that value gap is only increased on the third attack where you get a 1.6 bonus where smiter only gets a 1.4 and you get the 1.6 for every minion you cleave through and that basically leaves smiter in a position where it's going to be outvalued by every single one of the other talents in every single scenario unless the first attack you do hits a very specific brain point that could be a uh, dual axis uh, bardian one hitting uh, storm vermin if you headshot with a push block attack just to give an example um so, so you have to you have to build around that for smiter to ever be worth it now let's move on to enhanced power which works a little bit differently basically you retain the same uh, 0, 1, and 2 stagger count, uh, one, 120 and 140% uh, damage buffs that you already have uh, had, but the 7% extra power, which uh, is in fact 7.5%, uh, I should mention. Uh, so unlike all of the other stagger talents, enhanced power works a little bit different. Now this 7.5% per, um, power modifier is always going to be applied first, so you multiply that by 1.2 on the first attack, since ranged attacks will always consider a minion stagger of 0 to be stagger 1, which is why the first two attacks are both multiplied by 1.2, um, and the third one will be stagger equal 2, thus multiplied by 1.4. But the 7.5% power increase is also going to be multiplied with uh, power versus escape, and if you have that on your charm, it's also going to be multiplied with a headshot modifier. It's also going to be, you know, so suddenly th that can stack up quite quickly which is why it's so great for ranged focused heroes um, although preferably you'll want to hit some sort of breakpoints let's move on to one of my personal favorites the assassin now the assassin talent retains the standard 20 and 40 percent stagger uh, for regular attacks uh, the key thing to keep in mind here like basically any crit uh, critical hit is gonna be one apply the 1.4 bonus and any at like, like when you crit with a uh, with an attack the, that crit is applied to all the minions, which means the 1.4 is then universal across that attack. Where And that value gap is only increased uh, on the third attack, where you get a 1.6 bonus, where Smiter only gets a 1.4, and you get the 1.6 for every minion you click through. And that basically leaves Smiter in a position where it's going to be outvalued by every single one of the other talents in every single scenario, unless the first attack you do hits a very specific brain point. That could be uh, dual axis uh, bardian, one hitting uh, storm vermin. If you headshot with a push block attack, just to give an example. Um, 
So, so you have to you have to build around that for Smiter to ever be worth it. Now let's move on to Enhanced Power, which works a little bit differently. Basically, you retain the same Oblast. We have Bulwark, which essentially works the same way as Talentless. You have the same stack of 20 and 40 percent. They apply to all uh, all minions that you hit. But but as an extra bonus, uh, whenever you act, which uh, is in fact 7.5 uh, percent, I should mention. Uh, or is applied prior to calculating these, these buffs, which essentially means that your first attack is going to deal 75 extra damage, even without the stagger. That is then going to be multiplied by the 1.2 on the next attack, giving you 90 extra damage in this uh, fictional scenario, uh, which then increases to 1505, meaning 105 extra damage on the third attack. On top of that, it is also uh, applied to your range modifiers. You st it still works the same way in terms of stagger count goes from zero and straight to two, but now it's a thousand and seventy-five. You would be uh, multiplying with one point. Okay, so far so good. That wasn't too bad. Now let's get the cleave. <sighs> now I'm not gonna spend way too much time on this, but basically, how many minions? Assuming that the minions we're talking about are all identical, which means it's the same minion we're talking about, then how many minions you're able to cleave through? Uh, can be expressed as a function of your uh, stagger damage, like the D, if you see the D on the left side, the red uh, red square. Um, you multiply that by your raw power input plus your, uh, uh, no sorry, by, by your base hero power plus your raw power input, meaning certain buffs, like uh, the more the merrier, uh, also several its passive, but only, like, only raw power inputs, things that specifically state that it is your power that is increased. It's also a strength pot, for example. That's also a raw power input. Um, and then you divide that by a given minion's mass. So as an example, I did uh, the heavy attack one with the flail, and then we have a fanatic on a cataclysm. Then basically what I did was we took the number 17, I rounded it up from 16.97, multiplied it by 100% plus 30%, because I was assuming sell it with uh, the 30% uh, raw power input. And the number you end up with, you will then have to divide by the given enemy's mass divided by a mass modifier, assuming any is applied. So in this case, as you can see in the blue square, it says tank. Now if we look under uh, the minion in the, uh, the, the bestiary, under tank it says 75. Now, therefore we multiply by 10, divide by 7.5, and the number we then ha have there um, is 4.3, right? So one point, basically 17 multiplied by 1.3 divided by 4.3, and we end up with the number 5.1, meaning that your attack will fully cleave through five minions, but get stopped by the six. So you essentially damage or hit six minions in this case. So most of you guys could probably follow that. But calculating fucking stagger, okay? That, that's where I nearly gave up, okay? I, I was able to find the equation you see in the bottom, and a couple of posts, you know, I was checking, you know, everything from Discord, Steam, various places, but I was unable to find a single person having actually done, put in any numbers to do an actual stack or calculation. I couldn't find it anywhere. And then I realized that that's, it's actually an extremely complex piece of math. Um, because you have to take so many things into account. Like, where is the minion his attack animation? Uh, you also have the stacker resist. Yet I, I couldn't even find a reference to how you use the stacker resist. Like, is it per minion? Is it, a, 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 is it applied once? Is it, the, couldn't find it. Um, so instead, I decided that the, the first person to do an actual, if, if I don't know how, like, I'm assuming I have a tryhard audience. So the first person to, uh, in the comments post an actual like where you take every single factor you, you can you can decide the scenario yourself as long as the numbers are real it, if you're able to do an actual stacker calculation for a given attack you get a one-time voucher to decide uh, a video as long as it's room inside related you uh, whatever the, whatever you want if you want to be in the video if, you, if there's something specific you want whatever it is you think about it's your choice 100 percent like you control me what, what whatever you want if it's room inside related you have a free pass, 100%, because like without any reference points, it would simply take too much time uh, compared to the amount of value to the actual video. So uh, 
you guys better prove me right or it's gonna be really awkward. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on. I thought since I uh, tried to explain stagger uh, talents, we might as well, uh, before we get into the actual talent guide. Now basically, he has temporary HP gained on either uh, kills or on the amount of minions hit on cleave, right? Um, so the top one, uh, as you can see, is uh, basically that's the that's table which could apply to any hero with uh, who, who gains temporary HP on the kill talent. Now the numbers on the left side are the raw numbers, meaning <coughs> if you don't assume Boon of Shalia or any other modifiers, that is the amount of health that given minion is going to give you after you last hit it. Um, but here we have Zealot, right? And with Boon of Shalia and, and uh, Holy Fortitude, you can essentially uh, multiply it by 2.2, right? So o over double the amount of temporary HP gained, because in case you didn't know, uh, healing received also equals temporary HP gained. Uh, those two things are uh, not very well worded, but nonetheless the same. Um, so on the right side, you can actually see how much temporary HP you're gonna get with those modifiers while you're you have your passive up on max. Um, so as you can see, it's quite a bit, uh, which is also one of his strengths, right? You're you're able to pretty safely, if you know what you're doing at least, go down to below 30 HP, get all your uh, uh, fantastic passives up and running, and then you can generate so much temporary HP. Probably, uh, in fact, you're the hero who can generate the most in the in the entire game the quickest um, and then in the bottom yeah it's the same just with the cleave instead one two three four or five that's where it caps out uh, which essentially means like if you're cleaving with a flail for example uh, it's totally viable to to, um, to get temporary HP on cleave in this scenario as you can see you can then gain 11 HP for each attack into a horde which is not bad uh, up next we have Fonts of Seal, which is basically just heal share, and I'm now going to stop talking about it. Now for the level 10 talent, we have Castigate, which is, in my opinion, no, no, actually, sorry, which is objectively the best of the three talents for level 10. Uh, increases your attack speed by 10% while below half health, and double while below 20% health. And the entire point of the hero is to be below 20% health. Um, and it, it, like, it's going to proc even if your team has two Grimoires, like anything that isn't permanent green health is going to proc it. For those of you who've watched some of my other videos, you know that I often say attack speed is the best trade in the entire game for an item. And this is just a near permanent 20% attack speed buff. <laughs> but, you know, just because, sell it. Now for the level 10 talent, we have Smite. Uh, every fifth hit gains, uh, grants a guaranteed critical strike, and critical strike can no longer occur randomly. Now there are two ways to look at this. First is uh, a guaranteed every fifth hit, that's a 20% crit chance. Well, uh, assuming your base crit chance, which is 5%, uh, plus modifiers, you're usually going to reach 15% uh, crit chance. So in that sense, it's only 5% more. But if you were to run, even though it's, in my opinion, uh, you shouldn't, because it's just not as good as Castigate, but what you would have done then is you wouldn't have put crit chance on any of your weapons, uh, and that way you could gain some extra value from uh, the guarantee to hit every fifth attack and still proc things like your Swift Sling. So it's not that the talent in of itself is necessarily horrible, but compared to Castigate, there's just it, it's not a competition. Like it's already lost. So, uh, and pretty much the same goes for Unbending Purpose. Like five percent power. That's I, I think it's stacking multiplicatively like enhanced power. I'm not sure because it doesn't actually say that because <laughs> fat shark. But um, I'm pretty sure it does. But even in that scenario, it, it's like it's not gonna matter. Attack speed is love. Attack speed is life. Literally. Like you could say 20% attacking 20% faster could translate to 20% more HP with the cleave talent at least. But since you also have the 120% modifier, you would also multiply the amount of temp HP with the uh, with the 120%, which essentially means Castigate is one of the most broken talents in the game. Anyways, let's move on. Uh, first up, we have Crusade. Each stack of Fury Faith also increases movement speed by 5%. Uh, I wouldn't say it's horrible if it wasn't for Holy f uh, Fortitude. Uh, the talent in of itself is fine, especially if you're doing speedruns or, uh, or such. But really, you don't need it because you also have the talent Devotion, which I'll get to in a moment. Um, but it, it's just honest, like it's not that much value in a normal quick play game. Uh, you're just going to run your team for no reason, right? So uh, then we have Holy Fortitude, by far the strongest of the three, I would say. Uh, simply due to 
the, the yeah, you want you want to be low HP, so you want to be able to generate a lot of temporary HP. Makes sense. It, it's like you can be aggr It's one of those scenarios where you can be aggressive by being def by having a defensive talent. It's going to allow you uh, the space, the room, and the comfort you need to deal a fuck ton of damage. Um, and also, just if you if, yeah, if you compare it to uh, armor of faith, it, this is fifteen percent compared to armor of, of faiths only. 5%. Now, even if you were to do a damage reduction build, uh, which could then, you could make the argument that then the 5% could get, a, like, it could be a lot more than just that. And while that is true, you're still ending up in a scenario where you have to get low HP to then increase your temporary HP to then be able to get the value from the damage reduction, because the damage reductions are just not enough to prevent you from dying at low HP. So whilst a totally viable build can definitely be made, I would still make the point, uh, it is an opinion of course, but I, I think it's objectively better, holy fortitude. Um, that is an opinion. Um, then we have devotion. Taking damage increases movement speed by 30% for 2 seconds. Getting attacked no longer slows down, uh, slows movement speed. Now, this, these things are just amazing, right? You, you might not think of them as much, but really the degrees of freedom that that allows you means you don't have, you, you don't need the movement speed from the, the level 20 talent. And when you combine it with the, uh, in combination with unswivering strikes, which is the heavy attacks that cannot be interrupted, but every th time something tries, it's just gonna give you a boost. And these things significantly lower the skill cap of uh, a Zealot in comparison to Hero Life Unchained. You're just unstoppable while you're attacking due to all these freaking OP uh, passives. <laughs> Up next, we have Redemption Through Blood. Now, I really want to like this talent. Like, I, I look at it and I'm like, oh, nice. That way I can just infinitely push black attack. But in practice, it hasn't turned out to be great. But maybe, maybe someday there will come a weapon with a push black attack so amazing that it's uh, it's worth it. Only time will tell. <laughs> Up next, we have the talent, which name I shall not attempt to pronounce, uh, which is basically just a 10% stacking damage uh, re reduction modifier, which in of itself isn't terrible, stacking up with other damage reduction multipliers, but I feel like the movement speed just gives you so much more freedom, especially because you're already generating so much temp HP that that shouldn't be an issue. Up next we have Faith Flurry, and if you're anything like me, that's the first talent you would have tried out, just looking at it, you're like, power, more power, I want power, but in reality, it's in fact pretty pretty mediocre. It's like, meh. The thing about situational power buffs like, the, uh, like this one, uh, th that you have to stack up is it makes it really really hard to count on your power for a breakpoint um, also it's just not as good as the last one which we'll get to soon uh, but basically the way it works is you use your ulti and then every time you attack a minion you're gonna uh, apply a buff so you have basically six seconds in which each attack on a minion will reset the timer and proc one extra count on the passive. Now it's gonna last for five seconds starting from the last attack you did during the five seconds of uh, your ulti. But yeah, uh, I it's not as amazing as it might sound. Feel nothing, health can't be reduced below one for the duration of Holy Favor. I think the only scenarios where I've actually used that were weaves. I feel like otherwise it's an awkward talent because like, you already have your two minute uh, cooldown which is gonna save you and, and yeah, give you essentially the same buff. And, but here you're essentially using your, <coughs> your mobility to get to a spot, and then you have to take the damage at the spot, and then what are you gonna do afterwards? In terms of the mechanic, I'm actually not entirely sure if it procs, I'm assuming it's not gonna proc your passive if you take the damage while you have the feel nothing. At least if it does, then this talent is, is just horrible. But basically, of the three ultimate talents at level 30, Flagland Seal by far outvalues the two others in my opinion. It's the most versatile. It also might even output a higher DPS simply due to the attack speed proccing more often. Plus, remember Kata is a team game, and this is also going to allow you to have an easier time going in and out of places, uh, resting your friends, and then using your ulti afterwards. And definitely not enough people are actually utilizing that, so uh, try to keep that in mind. Now when it comes to the items and the properties you want on your jewelry, it's pretty uh, self-explanatory and a lot similar, uh, very similar to all of the other Master Duke uh, guides I've done so far. Crit Chains and Stamina Recovery, or Crit Chains and Curse Assistance, is what I would recommend, as well as Explosive Ordinance for the 50% increased area. This is especially good on the Zealot, as the 30% passive power actually stacks on a, on a bomb. 
Always remember though to equip your ranged weapon before throwing the bomb, assuming you have either Skaven, Armored, or Chaos damage, which is pretty likely. And for the charm, you guessed it, Power vs Chaos, Attack Speed, and Decanter or Proxy. And just in case it's your first time here, I explain why in one of all of the other mastery guys actually, which is why I'm sort of skipping lightly over it now. Now the necklace has a little bit more to offer in terms of variety for the Zealot, um, but I would definitely be running health pretty much regardless of the scenario. Uh, then I'd probably stack it up with either Barskin or Boon of Shalia, depending on whether you were doing um, a health gained or damage reduced build. Both can be viable, although I would say the I think the temp HP generation is better. When that's set, th for the second property, you can go anything from uh, stamina, which is my preferred in this case at least. It also depends a little bit on the weapon. A weapon like Axe and Falcon has an amazing push block attack with 20% extra crit chance. Now, if you combine that with extra stamina and stamina recovery, then you have a, a working combo. Also, FYI, I'm not sure I mentioned this yet, but pretty much every single melee weapon for Zealage, you're going to be running crit chance, attack speed, and switch lane. Pretty standard stuff, but just in case anyone uh, wasn't sure. On the Bracer Pistols, the single shot and the rapid fire shots, they deal identical damage output. Although the rapid fire shots might be able to shoot a lot faster, it's also a lot less accurate. You almost never want to use the rapid fire shots. There, if there's an ammo crate and you're, there's a boss, go right ahead. But on Kata at least, it's all about doing that double shot combo because it's really primarily for specials, because you don't have a way of consistently regenerating ammo. Also, brace of pistols are, as far as I know, the only ranged weapon in the game with an effective dodge count of 100, as well as 30% extra dodge distance. Moving on to the brace of pistols, they're fucking amazing to play on the Zealot. The 30% power simply means that you can almost certainly two-shot anything if you shoot in rapid succession, because the first attack is gonna, as I showed you earlier, is gonna trigger straight up to two, in the stagger count, or at least the damage is going to be equal to two in stagger count, which means you also get a 40% uh, bonus on the stagger uh, on the second shot. And when you basically when you combine that with the power that he already has as a passive, nearly every single minion will die if you use this quick uh, double shot combo. This, this does not apply to heavy armor units, of course. Also, not storm movements, I should mention. But then again, you're not really going to be using the Brace of Pistols to get breakpoints on Storm Remnants. Of course, you might shoot them when you have the ammo, but really, that's where your, uh, your melee fighting is going to be a lot more relevant. You primarily want to save your shots on a hero like the Salad. Unless there's plenty of it, it's not for increasing your DPS. It's for taking out specials when you need to. Which is also why I prefer to run Crit Chains and Power vs. Skaven on the pistols. Simply because it, it's... It's the Stranglers, it's the Assassins, and even though you can one-shot an Assassin if you have all, everything maxed out, there's still going to be scenarios where that's not the case. So the single-shot crossbow is actually kind of simple to explain, at least in terms of the breakpoints for the Zealot specifically. I've only tested it with all six stacks applied, and I'm using 20% Chaos, 10 on the Charm, 10 on the crossbow, as well as 5% Crit Chance, and Scrounger. The breakpoints, goes they, they go like this, any single Special or Elite, Chaos Warriors aside, you can one shot if you headshot or crit, or double uh, a double body shot. And that goes for any minion other than Chaos Warriors. Always be careful with Assassins though, as you often, you're not gonna have time to take another shot if you miss the first, although it is a guaranteed one shot. And remember to aim before you shoot. You're probably thinking, are you fucking retarded? Of course I aim. That's not what, what I mean, okay? Um, Whenever you take souped in shot with the crossbow, you get a 10% extra crit chance, which is also why Scrounger is the superior trade, specifically for the single target crossbow. For the melee weapons, I'd say the most interesting weapon, and my personal favorite at the moment, is the flail. It's interesting, it's different from many of the other weapons in the game, like it plays very different flail from most other, uh, most other weapons. What you want to keep in mind with the flail, is that the two first attacks are your cleave, which means if you're fighting a horde and everything's up close, then you're going to use light attack one and two, as well as your push attack. As you can see, that this has a nice, you know, it's a good cleave.
Also one thing you want to remember, especially on the flail. Now I told you about these tank modifiers earlier, and the heavy attack as I said, it staggers amazingly well. Especially for a weapon that has decent mobility. But one thing you can do is some weapons have combos where you can actually sort of access other attacks quicker. What do I mean by that? I mean if you heavy attack with this one first, and I then light attack after, right? Then I don't start from scratch with the light attack. It skips one. I don't know if you can see that. Let's try again. It skips one. So it basically goes heavy attack, light attack, light attack. Uh, it's not super significant on the flare, but that it basically means you want to start out with a heavy and then into light attacks if you want to maximize your initiation damage output for armored minions. Now, the Axon Falcon, or uh, as I named them in my own inventory, NANCL, potassium chloride. Only when you wield them together are they salty. Uh, no, but on a serious note, uh, keep in mind that it's a dual weapon, which means the damage numbers you see uh, for armor minions, for example, are actually multiplied by two. And then on top of that, you have power and uh, things like uh, headshot modifiers. This also means that if you hit them properly, you actually stagger with one weapon and get the stagger bonus from the other. Now, both of his heavy attacks are overhead attacks, which means they're super good for headshotting and dealing a bunch of armor damage. Other than that, you want to keep. You always want to remember to use his push block attack because it has 20% crit chance and uh, a heavy linesman modifier, and me which means it's really good for initiating and proccing your Swiss sling as much as possible. So perhaps even versus an armor when you want to start out with a push block attack that staggers him, might proc your Swiss sling, and then you go into the overheads. It's also worth noting that all of the attacks have armor damage attached to them, in a sequence of single target, cleave, cleave, single target. Now the bill hook is kind of special. It has amazing heavy attacks, and it's a super defensive weapon. But it has some interesting features, other than the fact that the second heavy attack, I simply cannot help myself but to like look up and then down, feeling like uh, you're gonna attack and deal more damage. You're not. Spoiler alert. Um, it also has uh, a special attached to it, uh, same as the rapier where you shoot with the uh, pistol. In this case, it has sort of a, a staggering hook which can basically disable a minion if you spam it. It's super quick, it doesn't do a lot of damage, but I mean, the weapon can hook regrets. What more do you want? On top of that, it has uh, an effective dodge count of 100, like the brace of pistols, one-handed sword. Just generally a, a nice and comfortable weapon. It's pretty f fairly easy to use. Also, it has the linesman modifier on the second light attack, as well as the push attack. But I'm gonna leave it there, because uh, it's very likely going to be changed in the next patch, I heard, so uh, let's leave it there for now. And assuming that we ignore the Falcon and not Axe, and Axe and not Falcon, I'll leave those for uh, a different video. I've always felt kind of clunky with it, I, I don't know why. I'm not saying it's bad, but I I I've never been a fan, I have to admit. It looks amazing, but I really, I'm not saying it's not viable, but I, I don't know. I, I don't like the playstyle it has, I don't think it fits Saltspire. And on a more objective note, I noticed that the heavy attacks and light attacks seem to deal the same damage, except the heavy attacks attack faster, and have they obviously have different mass modifiers, but I don't know, it seems weird. Uh, keep in mind though that the push block attack is an overhead, and it's not that I don't want to like it, I mean it's one of the most bling weapons in the game, but I don't know, I, I don't feel it. So but where does that actually leave us? Well, Zelda uh, is by far one of the most aggressive heroes, with a very forgiving set of passives, which makes him uniquely fit for new players. He has a bit of everything, and he feels both tanky, powerful, and mobile all at the same time. And you'll usually see a Zealot willingly picking up both a Tome and a Grim. But this is where most Zealots just have brain malfunctions. Like, not unlike a lot of shape players, firstly, people on high mobility heroes tend to gravitate towards the front, when in fact they should be doing the exact opposite. Like, the Zealot is given so much for free. But if you're quick playing on Cataclysm, that comes with a certain responsibility as well. Like, if I'm playing Pyromancer, it is your job to make sure that you're in range with your ulti to actually help me and not the other way around. Because you have the mobility and the degrees of freedom that allow you to do so. Like, a Ranger Barton with no ulti is gonna largely end up where the team and the spawns of the game dictate him to go. So if he gets cut off from the team somewhere, it's on you to get him bound back. 
if I drop on shade and you're in a 10 meter range, I expect you to be the first responder and willing to, at a minimum, being willing to risk proccing your passive in order to get me up. And it has nothing to do with being selfish, but if he plays his role correctly, then everyone else has the room to play their roles correctly. And yes, I'm essentially saying that Celeste is played best as a support hero on Cataclysm, and in many ways playing a very, very similar role to that of a handmaiden who knows what she's doing. Like, he has a two-minute get-out-of-jail-free card, but it's honestly not meant for him most of the time. It's sh a resource that sh he should willingly be able to trade at a moment's notice for the benefit of anyone on the team. But like, don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean that you aren't a ball berserker machine who fucks shit up. In fact, quite the contrary, you have to fuck shit up, and preferably pretty fast and at a constant rate. It's just that your fucking team needs you to go fucking fuck the shit up that is fucking up their shit, where their shit is being fucked up, and keep them alive. But anyways, that's it for me this time, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for helping me become partner on YouTube. It's it's now official. And thanks for all the amazing feet. And uh, don't don't forget, I'm changing the channel name to the Party Knife, as I said earlier. I fucking love you guys, and uh, I'll see you next time. By the hammer, there is another tavern here. I will smell it out.